Welcome to Obelisk 2023. Here is a short description of what you'll find inside. David Kennedy's article from Dundrum to Formula One recalls his memories of the 1960s. Despite all his challenges, he went on to become a Formula One driver with many successes, including winning for Team Ireland in the 2008 International World Cup Grand Prix. Closer to home, Rosemary Logue tells us of a local connection to the events of 100 years ago in centenary memories of Kevin O'Higgins' family. His two daughters strove for reconciliation and peace, Sister Mary Kevin through prayer and her sister Una by setting up Glen Cree Centre for Peace and Reconciliation. In Sandyford, a short history by Michael Van Turnhout, he describes the evolution of Sandyford from a ford across the Glanslower River on the Enniskerry Road to a village to then eventually becoming a large suburb of Dublin. Martin Craven was motivated to put pen to paper and write My Memories of Kilmacud Boys National School and tells us how much a difference one teacher can make in your life. In Brian McMahon's article, Ragged Lives, the Wakey Sisters of Reedsdale, we learn that the sisters were involved in the ragged schools of Dublin in the mid-1800s, where children were rescued from poverty, but also controversially from the perils of Roman Catholicism. In a very timely article entitled Stilorgan Bowl Letterplex, Leonard Kay writes about this recently demolished, well-loved centre of social activity. Thanks to him, its story has been recorded for posterity. In Lieutenant Martin Fitzgerald MC, Clive O'Connor has written a account of the Fitzgerald family and tells the story of how Martin was awarded the Military Cross. Ottoman Help to Ireland During the Famine is the title of Erwin Gill's article. On seeing a scroll on the wall of the Turkish Embassy in Dublin, his interest was piqued and he set about researching the story behind this deed and its connection to the town of Drogheda. Rome wasn't built in a day. In his article on the N11 Stilorgan Bypass, Liam Doyle tells us about this route corridor from Dublin to Bray. In Margaret Smith's article, Rosemount for Nights Out in Dundrum, she tells us that as an alternative to a night out in Dublin, you could stay in Rosemount, go to the cinema, go dancing, and finish off your night in the Stella Cafe with fish and chips. Today, we are probably all familiar with Rose Whiskey. As well as running his distillery, Roe was very involved in the life and politics of Dublin. Beatrice Doran, in her article, A Liberal Lord Mayor of Dublin, Alderman George Roe, brings this forgotten figure back to life. Last year, Andrew Kelly wrote for Obelisk on the Irish peacekeeping mission in the Congo. This year, he continues the story in UN Peacekeeping, Irish Defence Forces in the Congo, 1960 to 1964. This year has seen the 100th anniversary of the publication of James Joyce's masterpiece, Ulysses. Joycean scholar Frank Cogan shines a light on one of Joyce's characters in Myler Kyo, the real character behind the fistic hero in Ulysses. In Green MacAngus's article, The Role of Small Rivers and Streams in South County Dublin, he outlines the importance of these watercourses in the growth of South Dublin from the late 17th century to the present day. Peter Sobolowski tells us the story of Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Hume Dudgeon. He was a skilled and professional horseman. The riding school he set up in 1938 moved to Burton Hall in 1953 and he successfully trained British and Irish Olympic riding teams. Mount Marion in the 1930s and 40s is the subject of Gerard O'Kelly's article. Gerard traces the development of Mount Marion from 1925 with its super modern houses in what would become a very close-knit community with its own services and amenities. In the article by James Scannell entitled The Civil War Killing of Edward Leo Murray and Charles Rodney Murphy, James tells the story of two anti-treaty IRA activists who were shot and killed by the National Army. Frank Tracy has a specific interest in the German military cemetery in Glen Cree, and in this article he tells the stories of Erwin Schatz, one of its unlikely occupants. In our final article by Aidan Fierick, he recalls moments from the Society's trip to the Rock of Cashel and Holy Cross Abbey. We wish to thank most sincerely Fina Tipple, Susan Wayne and Stephen Lynch for all their help in the production of Obelisk 
2023. Obelisk 2023 can be bought in South Dublin Credit Union, Lower Kilmacud Road, Stilorgan, Lakeland Stores, 5 Lakelands Road, Kilmacud, Kildons Centre, 7 Dramartin Road, Kilmacud, Adrian Peters News Agent on the Rise in Mount Marion, the Village Cafe, Glen Alban House in Stillorgan, Kennedy Centre in Steppeside Village, and in Divine's Grange Star on Harold's Grange Road in Rathfarnham. Keep a watch on our website for any updates or changes. Finally, circumstances permitting, we look forward to selling Obelisk in the Stillorgan Shopping Centre for a number of days in December. We hope to see you there.